Welcome to you all who are watching me. I am Dr. Chandana Sharkar, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Anatomy, Shere Bangla Medical College, Borishan, Bangladesh. Today, I am going to discuss about the anatomy of the diaphragm. So let's start. What is diaphragm? The diaphragm is a musculoaponeurotic partition between the thorax and abdomen. The next question, why it is termed as the diaphragm? It is termed as the diaphragm because it is the largest diaphragm of our body. Now, what are the other diaphragms? Such as pelvic diaphragm, urogenital diaphragm, iris diaphragm and diaphragm of Schiller. Among all the diaphragms, the diaphragm is the largest diaphragm, so it is termed as the diaphragm. The next question, what type of muscle it is? It says skeletal muscle. We know there are three types of muscle. Skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle and smooth muscle. The diaphragm, it is composed of skeletal muscle. Now what are the anatomical points? The right dome is slightly higher than the left dome. The thoracic surface is depressed in the middle. The Hanakaval opening is situated 2 to 3 cm to the right of the median plane. These are the anatomical points. Now next question. What is the function of the diaphragm? It is the main inspiratory muscle. First of all, it acts as a partition between the thoracic and abdominal cavity. It is the anatomical function. Then physiological function. It is the main inspiratory muscle. It compresses the abdominal viscera and increases the intra-abdominal pressure. It is called into action before vomiting, maturation and defecation. These are the functions of the diaphragm. Now, what are the major openings of the diaphragm? There are three major openings in the diaphragm. Hanakaval opening, esophageal opening and aortic opening. What are the structures transmitted through the Hanakaval opening, esophageal opening, aortic opening, their location, their nature, etc. will be asked into the exam. Hanakaval opening, it is situated in the tendinous portion at the junction of the right and median leaflets of the central tendon. 2 to 3 cm right of the median plane. And it lies at the level of the intervertebral disc between the 8th and 9th thoracic vertebra. Now, what are the structures transmitted through here? Inferior Hanakava, few branches from the phrenic nerve and few lymph vessels from the liver. Now, what is the effect of diaphragmatic contraction on this opening? When diaphragm contracts during inspiration, this opening dilates. As a result, more blood enters into the right atrium. We know inferior Hanagabha opens into the right atrium. It forms at the level of the fifth lumbar vertebra by the union of the right and left common iliac vein and it enters into the thoracic cavity through the Hanagabha opening and opens into the right atrium. So, when the diaphragm contracts, more blood enters into the right atrium. Now, esophageal opening. Where it is located? It is located at the level of the 10th thoracic vertebra in the muscular part of the diaphragm. So, Hanakaval opening is situated in the tendinous part and the Esophageal opening is situated in the muscular part. Now what are the structures transmitted through the esophageal opening? Esophagus, anterior and posterior vagal trunk, esophageal branches of the left gastric vessels, etc. 
And what is the effect of diaphragm T contraction on these opening? These esophageal opening constricts. So the regurgitation of food from the stoma into the esophagus is prevented as well as inspiration and deglutition cannot take place at the same time. Now the last one is the aortic opening. It is situated at the level of the 12th thoracic vertebra. Its nature is osseoaponeurotic. During diaphragmatic contraction, there is no change or there is no effect on this aortic opening. So I have already mentioned it is situated at the level of the 12th thoracic vertebra. Now what are the structures transmitted through here? Descending thoracic aorta passes through this opening and becomes the abdominal aorta. We know aorta is divisible into ascending aorta, arch of the aorta, descending aorta and abdominal aorta. When the descending thoracic aorta enters into the aortic opening and enters into the abdominal cavity, it is then named as abdominal aorta. So, thoracic aorta descends through the aortic opening and thoracic duct ascends through this aortic opening. And sometimes, ajagas vein, when it arises as lumbar ajagas vein, transmitted through this aortic opening. And its boundary, anteriorly it is bounded by the median arcuate ligament, posteriorly by the body of the 12th thoracic vertebra and on each side by right and left cross of the diaphragm. And when the diaphragm contacts, there is no change of this opening. Now, from where the diaphragm takes origin? It takes origin from three sources. Coastal origin, sternal origin and vertebral origin. First of all, sternal origin. It takes origin from the back of the digified process by two fleshy slits. Then coastal origin. It takes origin from the inner surfaces of the lower six ribs and their coastal cartilages. And vertebral origin on either side, it takes origin from three sources. From two crura, right cross arises from the upper three lumbar vertebra and their intervertebral disc. And left cross arises from the upper two lumbar vertebra and their intervertebral disc. From medial arcuate ligament, and this medial arcuate ligament is formed by the thickening of the psoas fascia from a pair of lateral arcuate ligament. And how the lateral arcuate ligament forms? The lateral arcuate ligament is formed by the thickening of the anterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia. And where the muscle fibers are inserted? The muscle fibers are inserted into the central tendon. The diaphragm is composed of two parts, peripheral muscular part and centrally tendinous part which is termed as central tendon. This is the central tendon. It is like a trifoil lip and it is composed of three leaflets, median leaflet, right leaflet and left leaflet. And at the junction of the median and right leaflets, Hanakaval opening is situated. Now, nerve supply, very, very important. The diaphragm is supplied by somatic nerves. Motor supply is derived through phrenic nerve. Both the central and peripheral part are supplied by the phrenic nerve. But in case of sensory supply, the central part is supplied by phrenic nerve and the peripheral part is supplied by lower six or seven intercostal nerves. Now, why the peripheral part is supplied by lower six or seven intercostal nerves? Because this peripheral part, developmentally, it arises from the mesoderm of the body walls. So, the sensory supply of the peripheral part comes through the lower six or seven intercostal nerves. Let's go to the next picture. These are the openings. Hanakaval opening, esophageal opening and the aortic opening 
Dhanagawa opening is situated at the entire vertebral disc between the 8th and 9th thoracic vertebra. Esophageal opening is situated at the level of the 10th thoracic vertebra and aortic opening is situated at the level of the 12th thoracic vertebra. In this figure, the vertebra level of the major openings of the diaphragm has been shown. Now let's go to the next picture. Previously I have mentioned that the diaphragm is a skeletal muscle. So one question arises. How will you identify the skeletal muscle under the microscope? This is the microscopic feature of the skeletal muscle. Number one, the long cylindrical muscle fiber without branching. Number two, multiple peripheral nuclei are present. Number three, distinct cross station. These are the features by which we can identify the skeletal muscle under the microscope. Now, developmental source. Let's go to the next picture. Now, diaphragm develops from four sources. The central tendon develops from the septum transversum. Now, the next question. What do you mean by the septum transversum? The septum transversum is a mesodermal bowed of tissue. The small peripheral part develops from the pleuroperitoneal membrane. The large peripheral part develops from the mesoderm of the body valve. And the right and left crust develops from the dorsal mesentery of the esophagus. These are the developmental sources of the diaphragm. So this is all about the anatomy of the diaphragm. Please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon. Don't forget to like, share and put your valuable comments on the video. May all be happy. May all be free from illness. See you on the next video.